Come on, Biscuit. Morning, world. Welcome to Tuesday, 20th of September. Nope, nope, you're still not having it. Go away. So, just been back from visiting mother. She seems to be in reasonable health. <coughs> Bored. Doesn't want to be in bed anymore, which I can absolutely sympathize with. Because like I said to her, I spent my 18th birthday in bed with a broken leg. Some of you know that, some of you don't. Uh, 22 days I was in bed and it was so dull. I hated it being able to do nothing. Anyway, we're going out with my trusty ragwort fork. I got a few raggies to pull up <coughs> and deal with. But on the way down, because we're going out on the golf course, I thought I'd show you the progress of my grass seed. Some of you may be interested. No microphone in there, although I can mount it back. It's a bit windy. So what I've done is I've put the sender in my pocket and actually the land is inside inside my fleece don't know if that's going to make me muffled but i'm kind of open it's going to take the wind noise off but there's the results of my grass seeding it's all coming up quite well uh, the cattle have pretty much finished grazing off the bottom right hand field now we walked it yesterday there's not much out there um, Ideally, they'd come back out here because there is still quite a good bite out here. The problem is, if I bring them out here now, they're going to dig holes in this. I don't want holes dug in it. So what we might have to do, because I've got plenty, is I'm thinking of coming down with um, either the skid steer or the deucen later on um, and levelling off a couple of the piles of soil we put out here. You can go, you can go, and you can. Every time I come out, I pick up some stones. The idea being, sooner or later, I'll run out of stones. Anyway, back to where I was. Um, if I can uh, put some bales out here on the golf course for them, they can stay out. They're quite happy outside. They're just they're getting a bit short of grub. Um, as long as I can keep them fed out here, they can stay out here. Um, it's the best place for them. They've got water, they've got shelter. All they need is a bit more food. So, sorry, I'm walking queer because I'm dropping the fork. Hang on. Right, I'm not queer any longer. Okay, so I have got, I don't know, half a dozen raggies to pull up. They're all over in the far piece. Um, I did pick one up the other day down by the footpath down there. Got 90% of the route. That 10% will probably shoot again next year, but I would have stolen a terrific amount of energy from the plant. So we know, maybe it'll die. Maybe. Ragwort. One or two of you have said, what's my problem with ragwort? Why don't I like it? Um, it's a pretty plant. I mean, and for some of the wildlife, like our cinnabar moth, it's almost an essential plant. But it's highly toxic to, well, us and my livestock. Uh, cattle, sheep, horses won't normally eat ragwort because it stinks. They can smell it. Um, so normally, if you see animals out in a grazing in a field, you'll see lots and lots of yellow because they've not eaten it. It's because it smells. The problem is if I ever want to make hay out here, once you've dried it, there's no scent, but it's still just as toxic. As I understand, I can't remember how the toxins work, how the poison works, but as I understand, whatever it is in ragwort, there's one, finds its way to your liver or the animal's liver and never leaves. And whatever that toxin does, it's harmful to the liver. So you don't want to, you don't want to eat it. Not only do you not want to eat it, you don't really want to touch it. 
just oh, hang on, just picking up the plants not too bad but the second you squeeze any juice out of it then we can actually absorb the juice through our skin and our hands and apparently that also finds its way to our liver and something about this toxin our body doesn't excrete it so whatever we ingest or absorb in we don't chuck back out our body doesn't get rid of it it stays there and it builds and it builds and it builds so uh, lots of bodily wastes are removed through our daily waste some of it comes out of our sweat some of it comes out under our fingernails which is one of the reasons you're not supposed to chew your fingernails because they're toxic i don't know um, but whatever the toxin is in these fellas it stays there it doesn't come out it just builds so we don't want it it's actually an offense to have this stuff on your land when it's this size what we call the rosette size it's not actually that poisonous hasn't built up the toxins in it and i think sheep will quite happily chew this stuff doesn't do them a lot of harm but a problem this little plant will eventually develop into something that's up to five foot tall producing 150,000 seeds we don't want that so right if you pour these up quite often actually i broke the tip of the root off that quite often they'll snap off at grain level but if you leave enough of that root clump in the ground there's enough energy in there for the plant to come back next year we don't want that so now i can chuck this away um, the plant can go and rot in the hedge but the flowers i don't want them creating seeds bloody foam All right, Warren. All right, mate. Yeah. Um, you've got a spring off the back of this um, donkey. Yeah, it's got the, one of the assister springs is missing from the inside. Yeah, well, we got, we got a plate ages ago for this, didn't we? Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, where's the spring? It was in the passenger side footwell. Oh, no. I don't like the way you just said that. <laughs> it was. Oh, is it not in there now? I don't know. Oh, that's where it was, because it's not very big. No, I know, it's only in a sister spring. Yeah. I got welding to do, mate. How have you? She got a cut holes in the chassis, yeah. All right, okay. Um, yeah, as far as I know, the spring was left in there, but they might have taken right, it out. I'll have a look in the vehicle. All right. Hopefully it's still in there. All right. Well, we didn't, we didn't go too mad at it because it was only going to be MOT today. We thought we'd do the spring on the service or something, but... Um... Well, we've got to do it for the, the doof, so... How have you? Yeah. All right, if you can't find it, shout. I'll go find it and bring it down. <laughs> oh no, I'll try, I'll rephrase that, I'll go look for it, and if I, if I find it, I'll bring it down. <laughs> it's probably bounced off somewhere. Yeah, no, 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 it was in the footwell, but they might have, because it was rattling right. about in there. Okay, I'll have a deco. If there's problems, I'll give you a show, alright? Alright mate, thank you. Uh, how desperate are you for this year? It, it comes back when it comes back. Right, okay, alright, because we are pretty busy, obviously I'll do my best. I understand, right. yeah, but I'll be realistic about it, so it's a case yeah, of okay. when we get right, it. Yeah. Thank you, bye-bye, bye. Bye-bye, bye. Right, okay, so Donkey went in for MOT today, which we didn't expect too many problems. We know Donkey's got a few little issues because he's getting on now. But um, inside the main coil spring on the back, there's a little spring and a sister spring, and it's for vehicles that carry more weight. I didn't think that would be an MOT issue, but apparently it is. So, um, but because I didn't think it was an MOT issue, I didn't check to see that the sister spring was in the cab. It was in there, but the lads might have taken it out. So Warren might be ringing me back a bit saying, go find it and bring it down. After I've got the ragwort out. <sighs> we knew when we bought this, we were doing this for probably five years. And this is year three. So compared to what it was like when we first started, it's actually not that bad. Right, okay. Some of these are thinking about going to seed, so we'll just 
have them in the bag. Like I said, I can chuck the rest of the plant, this lot, in the hedge. These, I don't want them in the hedge, because I don't want them seeding next year's. Come here. So if you look at these seed heads, they are like little dandelions. I mean, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of baby ragworts in every one of these. And I don't want them, and I know for certain my neighbor doesn't want them. Mr. K next door sells his um, grass. He doesn't graze it, well he does, he has a bit of winter grazing, but he makes hay. So the last thing he wants is a neighbour allowing a load of ragwort to go to seed. That's very, very unneighbourly. Right, you can actually all go in there. Right. That lot can go in the hedge. Any more? Any more? Oh, yeah, there's a little one there. When they're very, very young, they can be quite hard to spot. And if you're driving along in your tractor, sometimes that could look very similar to that. In fact, there's one hiding in here next to the thistle. But he didn't hide that well. Here you come. Come on. Gotcha. And it started to rain. Okay. Well, I've got most of them. There wasn't actually that many down here. But when they're this rosette size, they're not really doing any harm as such. But you don't want them getting up to a mature plant. It goes to seed. Or leaving holes for the cattle to dig up either. So not a lot of cinnabar moth on these fellas. Um, we allow some ragwort to grow in the wildlife area. A couple because they're really, really difficult to get to. But we've even got some that are fairly close to the paths over there. And if I find cinnabar moth uh, caterpillars on them, I try and leave them. So a cinnabar moth caterpillar is basically a black and yellow striped caterpillar and they eat the ragwort, they ingest the toxins of the ragwort, which makes them toxic, which kind of means the birds don't touch them. Good strategy. Uh, the moth itself, when it's um, hatched and it's a moth, is kind of a little grey fellow, but when he opens his wings, and some of you will see him, it's got the second wing underneath is uh, red, so it's like a charcoal grey or charcoal black top wing and then underneath a red sort of not bright but it's a red so it's just they're just a pretty little moth so at the end of the day we don't take everything just for the sake of it I will let them eat as much as they can of those plants and I keep an eye on it but once the seed heads or the flower heads start to turn the seed then I'll come down and I'll pinch them off put them in a bag and they go in the incinerator then with their paperwork rubbish and we burn it so Okay, right. More rain coming. Cup of tea. <laughs> right, come on, if you get hard enough. Skit. <laughs> Yeah, you're all gob you are. Stand and fight. That's all right until she nips your ankles. She wins. Hello, boys and girls. Oh, yeah, you want to know what all the kerfuffle's about? It's the dog, not me. 
Now where are we all? Grub's getting a bit thinner here. Hey. Where's 222? Two, two, two? Those are a foot. Yeah, there you are. Hello, girl. It's just a ragwort fork. It's not going to hurt you. I'd say she's walking okay now. All right. Okay. Come on, you. Let's get. Go and put the kettle on. Make the builders a cup of tea. Ah! It's all boarded up now. They're inside. Started on the stud work. That was a job this morning. It took us an hour to work out where the walls are going. Inch this way, half an inch that way, three inches over there. I mean, you can take measurements for things like beds and wheelchairs and corners and can we get in this and can we get in that? So, yeah. You should think about it now. Right. You lot can go in there. I just poked my head through the window to see Dave. I said, uh, cough of coffee. He goes, I'll just add one, but if you're making one, I'll have another one. He said, and then you can come in and I'll tell you how much this lot lot costs. And I said, what lot? He goes, there's a little pile of timber on the floor. Uh, what was it? He said it was two before timber, 72 lengths of two before and um, how many? One, four door frames, I think it was. And he said, how much do you reckon that lot was? And I said, he goes, go on, how much? And I said, oh, I don't know. Bearing in mind how much I think timber is, I said, 480 quid. He laughed at me. He said, go on, try again. I go, what more? He goes, oh, and then some. I said, 520. No, just you're not even close. And Andy's there shaking his head and I'm going, just tell me. I said, hang on, uh, I'll go and get the camera. You can tell me on camera so you can see, they can see my face. And he goes, no, no, no. He said, because someone out there will tell you that you, they could have got it cheaper. And he said, he said, how much? And I said, just tell me. He said, you got a couple of pounds change out of a thousand pounds. And I'll show you this little stack of timber. It's a small stack of timber uh, for doing the stud walling inside um, and four door frames. It was a thousand pound. He said he couldn't believe it either, but he said and that's after he spoke really nicely to the lady behind the counter. And he does have a bit of charm with the ladies. He always did, had had. Um, and he said, and that's after I got about 60 pence a metre knocked off. So I thank him for that bit, because if he hadn't done that, that would have been like 1,200 quid or more. So anyway, right, well, Mrs. P has obviously made me a milky coffee, which I'll enjoy. You can have a water one. Always wash the cups up. There's nothing worse than working at someone's house and they go, oh, would you like another cup of tea? And you go, oh, that'd be lovely. And they bring it out and you can see they've never washed it up. And it's like, really? Wash the cup up. I've got to walk the long way round to deliver this unless I just put them on the windowsill and then walk round empty-handed. Better idea. Just while I've got the roof on. I bought a new brush yesterday. So um, yesterday was Ewan's first day with us. Um, so although in the morning he'd, we kind of introduced him to the chipper and the stump grinder and bits and bobs, but we couldn't do much else because he'd got no PPE apart from helmet. 
So uh, yesterday afternoon it was a trip down to Chandler's to kit him out with new boots and chainsaw gear. Which was a bit painful, but you've got to have it. So I really, really, really need Tim to come and sort that out. There is a reason it's doing that. Anyway, as I was going, we went to Chandler's and said, while I was there, I uh, offered to Chandler's to sweeten the deal of me spending so much money on PPE by giving me a free brush. Because Dave and Andy have had my brush off the back of the Land Rover, which lives there. You can go back in there. Um, I thought I'll have a free one. I didn't get it for free. He did give me a discount. But it wasn't for free. Right. Well, I'll put that where it belongs, and then I'll tell you why that gutter is doing that. There you are. That's where he lives. So Mr. Pierce steals it again. Okay. Right. Gutter. All this has to be dealt with. Uh, the water that comes down through when we get a storm, all of this i got to shape up. This is why I would like to put another drain coming from the yard up there, down out through here and do it, but it's a case of when I can save me pennies. So for the time being it might just be a case of cutting a groove with the digger down the yard to divert the water coming this way and just take it away through there. Anyway, why is the gutter doing that? I can hear you asking, I'll tell you. Because we haven't yet put the spout down. The spout is coming down there, but um, we haven't drilled the hole. That's going to be a four inch hole going in the spout to drain into this fella here. But the hole hasn't been drilled. And obviously that there is the lowest point on the gutter at the moment. Once we've got the hole cut this end, that should stop. At least I blink and hope it does. Right, down in here. Okay, nothing much is going down the pipe at the minute because we're soaking away into the ground and there is actually two perforated pipes down there. Eventually this is going to be concreted around and this surface water should go down that Is done but it's kind of no point in me mixing concrete up because as i've told you before we've got another leg going on the end of the barn up there to hold concrete panels we've got another leg going on this apex of the roof here to hold a concrete paneling gate and the same the other end so we've got to order more concrete and the idea is these two covers will have to be done then so but i do want to get this this sorted out i might as a temporary thing this year, I might have to just dig out all along the bottom of here, put a temporary drain up there, and just drain some of it down that way. Might just be what I have to do. As long as I can keep it dry in here, we'll be okay. Right, let's go see what the lads are doing. It's nasty crappy weather, they've been out working all morning, and there's no point in scaring the new guy off by getting him too wet in the first week. Yeah. What, you put it on or taken off? Uh, taken off. Okay. Yeah. When you're putting him back on, when you're tightening up, yeah. you hold him by the top chain. Yeah. Because you want the nose of the bar to be held, held up. Um, just, just to tighten it up. So. Yeah. Okay. Loads of stuff to learn yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you destroying, Martin? Put it back together. Oh, well, you put it back together. So it's not destroying yeah, it. You can do it, so you can put it back in <laughs> Right, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a job of the drawing it. Yeah. Just pull straight up. So pull just lift up. the whole lot straight up. Oh, yeah. And then back a bit and you pop off. That's it. You have to take the Johnny off. Take the chain off, so. 
you blow all around your it on there. Yeah. If you want to blow it there, that's where the oil goes onto the bar. Oh yeah, so there's a little yeah. hole there. So if we're oil on that side, yeah, and oil on that side, once you turn the bar on that side, yeah, that's so it. Use the little clean but blow oil in the spot in that as well. Sometimes yeah. up on these, there's a pinhole as well. Okay. Because there's a bearing in there. Yeah. So sometimes you'll find a pinhole, and there's actually a, a grease point. Oh yeah. That's not it, there is it. So um, yeah. I don't. I think this is actually a seal bearing. This one. Okay. So you can get it. It's more, it's more it, it yeah, do. but when you're taking these apart, you've got to make sure that oil holes, and quite often you're, because these blades work both ways, yeah. so you can wear it, got to wear on both sides, so you've got to make sure that the oil hole there is kept clear and in the that. groove in there. Yeah. So you put it back on, it's easier on that way, that. Yeah. You can put it back on, put them on. Upside down. Upside down, sort of thing, so. Yeah. yeah. Keep it wearing, turn yeah. even, that's sure. Yeah. Okay, right, I'm gonna go and do something in the drive. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Did it got darker? Oh, yeah. you put a board in the window. Is it? It's like half a job. Well, yeah. Because you only cut through halfway. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the door's going. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So you cut oh, it through halfway, turn it upside down, your wall stays straight, and then after you put your stud up, you can cut the piece out. Oh, that's in other words, you're being clever. Yeah. All right, okay, I'll shut up. Can't teach that shit. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's the size of our bathroom then. Yeah. That's going to be plenty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty. Plenty. Yeah, figure, especially as you ain't got a bath in there. No, yeah, well, you but but there's enough room. You, you ain't got to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you could later on if you want to. You could put a bath in it. Could it yeah. Yeah. Because if the bogs go in there or in a sink, there probably is enough room to put a bath inside if you had to. Yeah. It's dark in here, isn't it? I'll get out the light. Not that there was much in the first place. Do you want me to bring my um? What's it lights up? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, I'll go and get them. I'll go and get I'll go and get wet again. I don't mind getting wet. come back inside I can't do much video out there where the guys are because they got their radio on and that's kind of no that's fair enough I'm not gonna make them turn the radio off just so I can turn this thing on but um I've come in and we've had a delivery I already know what's in there 
because Mrs. P told me what was in there. So we've had a little gift from Ian. I say we, Mrs. P. I said, don't send her any. But thank you. She really, really appreciates it. And she likes the crunchy as well, so. Okay. Happy wife, happy life. Not that he deserves it, because every time he picks up one of those pieces of timber, that's another tenner, and every time he cuts it, that's three quid knocked off. Bloody wind-up merchant. Not that he deserves it. No, no bloody wind-up merchant. Yeah, they're, they're a tenner each. Yeah. <laughs> I've been lashing down for the last hour. So just out of idle interest, and in case any of you might be interested, we're just going to go and look at the end of my pipe and see if the drains are doing what they're supposed to be doing. First stop, Okay, so most of that is coming from over there, down the yard. Okay, well, so far so good this end. We've got warm sunshine forecast for tomorrow. So with this today, this lot should get well away, go green. Actually, there's more coming out of the six inch pipe than there is out of the um, solid. Someone's working. I need to get in there tonight. Do you want me to get in there? I don't want to get in there. I'll get in there. Alright, so yeah, the six inch land drain is running really well. This little fella coming out of there fast enough but uh, not really chucking me rat cover up too much but please with that that's taking the water off the ground that's what we wanted yeah that is working quite well in fact it's piddling out of there well happy with that A bit further up that ditch, you can't see it. There's actually another six inch pipe, um, which runs up, oh, about 15 meters up from there. That's taking some, but yeah. Chuffed. It was worth doing. Right, I've got to get out of there again now. <laughs> so I'm looking at that again. There's not much running out of this fella right now, but of course he's not actually connected up to the gutter on the barns. Um, pretty sure that once the he is all connected up and it's connected taking the root uh, water off of basically 60 foot by 60 foot of roof. Pretty sure that flap's gonna be not out horizontal, but it'll be taking a lot more water. A lot more. That's doing its job. <laughs> There's a lot of water going down here. A lot. So a lot of this here, which that pipe's not taking fast enough, is because it's not going down there. It's deliberately not going down there because I don't want it blocking up with crap. So, yeah. Once we've got that sorted out and the gutter going down properly, including that side, because of course there's no gutter on this side of the barn either at the moment. Not that there seems to be an awful lot running off there right now, but all that 
is going down here should go down that once it's connected up which isn't yet <laughs> 